Good morning, LinkedIn Live. We're so excited to be here with our community of lenders. Today we have a very special guest with us. We have Jill Castilla. She is the CEO of Edmund Bank in Oklahoma. Jill, thank you for being with us today. How are you today? I'm doing great, Jeffrey. It's good to see you. It looks like things are beautiful in Austin. It is. We were blessed with a cold front this morning. Um, I am coming from you outside of my house as of my kids are taking up all of the rooms in the house. So I figured it would be better if I sat outside with you, Jill. Yeah, no, I, I can totally understand that. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll have some normalcy back after this pandemic thing shifts. So Jill, in all, in all, Kidding aside, in all seriousness, in preparing for our time this morning, uh, I got to really appreciate kind of your leadership style. Uh, you seem to have won a lot of awards for for your innovation and your and your dedication to Citizens Bank. If you could tell us where the bank was, where you started, kind of where it is today. Um, so I came to the bank in 2009 um, in the height of the financial crisis. Our bank was um, had just received, a, a, gone through a Federal Reserve examination where they were um, slaughtered um, and were in trouble condition and downgraded to the lowest that you could imagine from, uh, from an exam standpoint. And so uh, I was tasked with how, you know, quickly turning this around. Our bank didn't have any capital to add. Um, so it was about shrinking the bank and getting it back on footing. We had rampant expensive use internally as well as um, credit quality issues. So addressing both of those. And um, we ended up orchestrating the fastest turnaround in the nation without adding capital, um, which then really got us um, focused on we want to be here for another 120 years. Mm -hmm. How do we make that happen? We had fought for this bank and it survived. And so our board and manager who was really on board was saying, you know, we, we're we're going to pay the way for what community banking looks like for another century. So we consolidated our bank, bank locations to one location after that. Um, we ended up um, creating some new technology um, to help supplement where those locations used to be by having kind of FaceTime at the ATM before ITMs were available to community banking started. Uh, my personal reputation, the bank's reputation was really torn apart during that time. And so mm -hmm. we started repairing that. And then have gotten to the point today where we, I think, have a team that's very courageous and a board that will back us to try new things, um, all in that spirit of staying relevant and sustainable for another century. Fantastic. Uh, that looks like that transition was kind of an interesting road. Where did you get that leadership style? Because it looks like at some points in that transition, uh, you were take no prisoners and, and not the most favored position or person in the world. Uh, that's definitely true. I think the experience mainly came from really two sources. One, I had served for 10 years with the Federal Reserve Bank and their management development program. So, you know, just being part of an ethical organization and knowing that processes and procedures, if you have those down and the repeatable systems, then you can be very creative in how you approach your work. So there was that confidence. But I think most of it came from my experience at, in the U.S. Army and the Oklahoma Army National Guard, uh, but first as a private and then as a um, an NCO um, and then an officer candidate that um, the, of how you lead in a battle on a battlefield and during crisis, both taking care of your people, but having the mission first and that there always a sense of urgency, uh, especially in times of crisis. And so I think that really helped me um, be that kind of battlefield commander um, during that time and not be as concerned about what perception necessarily was of me, but it was, it was about winning the battle or winning the war for us. It was, the failure was not an option. How do we how do we win? Um, which winning was just basically not failing, and then transitioning to an environment in which where it's okay to fail. I mean, that was probably the biggest leadership challenge of all. Mm -hmm. Well, it it it's an honor to see that transition. I'm sure that you're very proud, as well as your employees are very well of of, of what you've done. And so, kudos to you. Yeah. Um, also, in kind of preparing for this, I've seen that you've won a lot of innovation awards, um, but I also saw that you use innovation to also communicate with your clients using social media and doing things like on Twitter that you have never done before. So if you can't talk to us about your innovation strategies from a technology perspective, um, but also from a communication perspective, because I think there's a large gap in there today. 
what we found early on was that um, it was really difficult to be kind of in the grocery store aisle and knowing what the community was feeling during the financial crisis. And so when I joined Twitter um, and to some degree like LinkedIn and Facebook and later Instagram, that um, you're able to get a really feel of what the, what the community challenges are. And there were other business owners that were turning around their businesses or growing their businesses at the same time that weren't able to go to traditional networking functions like the Chamber of Commerce, for instance. And I really found the whole new huge Chamber of Commerce out in social media and was able to you know gain friendships and some lifelong friendships, honestly, and mentors um, through utilizing social media. So our innovation strategy has been less about um, – the development of products and services. We really have everything off the shelf that you can mm-hmm. buy in banking. Um, so there's nothing really new or exciting there. And we try to be on le- the leading edge of who we're partnering with, but, but all the products that we do are typically available to other banks. But it's more of how do we communicate and, and, and expand that grocery store aisle into the virtual space. And um, it happened, you know, just beautifully coincided with our turnaround that social media gets started gaining prevalence. And so I'm really grateful that we were able to get to, get to the utilization there. Now that has led to us then developing kind of bank in the box where we can remotely support our customers with large cash transactions, um, but they use their phone to access the space. And we actually ended up filing for our patent earlier this year for that. But that all came from social media interactions we had on social media that led mm-hmm. to in-person engagements that led to became we host a um, in pre-COVID times a monthly street festival that draws 50,000 people a month to downtown Evan and that led to relationship that led to um, this bank in the box type of um, technology so I think te- the, where I've great gained the most innovation is by having a huge network of friends, mm-hmm. and that would not have been possible without social media. It also it, all, it also led to us having uh, a friendship now with with Mark Cuban and and mm-hmm. uh, the partnerships with him, and um, all of that was due to social media. But primarily, the friendships gained from it and that network. Um, that would normally have been confined to your community. Now you can have a network of fintech influencers, some of the greatest minds in banking, some of the greatest minds in leadership from around the world now become your kind of personal board of directors where that previously would have been limited to just the community that you serve in. Mm-hmm. I found that 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 fintech community, it's very nice to have a, a very strong network in that in that footprint. Um, I think that I think you're wise to have gone there. I was excited to see um, and in preparation for this that that you and Mark Cuban had were able to come up with a strategy to really help the community during the PPP. So kudos for that. Um, you had mentioned it rather quickly. Uh, talk about your patent pending unmanned unmanned bank. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we're super excited about it. So I think the industry is. Um pretty universally adopted the interactive teller machine. And so mm-hmm. we've been using um, those machines for quite some time. And so what this allowed us to do, this this technology kind of opened up that um, that ITM machine is very limited to more of just consumer transactions, especially as it's working it really in any kind of high capacity cash or coin. It doesn't ha- allow you to, to deposit coin. It doesn't allow you to have a large amount of cash that you're depositing. And the change orders are so much difficult and limited as well, especially for small businesses that maybe need rolled coins, but you're not going to get that out of an ITM. So we created a space and it happened kind of incrementally and then turned in when we stepped back, we're like, oh my goodness, I think we completed, we just developed something brand new. But there's a dispensary that allows uh, small businesses to get access to rolled coins. So they can get 50 rolls of pennies if that's what's needed. And they access the space using their phone. They unlock the space, it locks behind them. There's free Wi-Fi within the space. It's 500 square feet foot footprint. And then so they get rolled coin. They can make deposits of up to 10000 in cash, withdrawals of 10000 in cash, and do change orders in any denomination that they want. Um, this is not through an ITM. This is through a separate machine that we found in another industry and then reconfigured it for banking. And then there's um, the ability to use the ITM, so you can then interact with the teller if you need to. And we have a night drop, too, that we rigged up that when you open the night drop, it sends an email to our staff. So we know we need to go check the night drop rather than spending resources to go there and check it on a regular basis. And so it's really self-contained. Um, our, we've been really popular with some of our restaurants that can use the space to interview staff or potential staff members. 
um, and provide some some levels of safety whenever they're uh, making deposits late at night. They can make deposits overnight uh, without uh, and get immediate credit. This is also integrated with our core system. It, the the uh, functionality also includes the ability to ACH to other banks. We haven't deployed that technology yet, but it could be even non-bank customers that could use it. We could see that if we ever go to like post office banking, that this mm-hmm. type of system would be perfect to be able to drop in um, that will allow anyone to have access to their cash and, and bank transactions uh, without having to drive you know, into the other town if they don't have a community bank in their location. That's fantastic. That's digital transformation. That's wonderful. I may call on you again to really talk about digital transformation. It, it's a very broad subject, but it's wonderful that you've had this experience, and I really appreciate your, your fearless leadership in going in those directions. Well, thank you. It's a, it's a fearless staff that has um, the rigor around me to make sure that we're looking at things from all different angles. Mm-hmm. That's good. It's nice to have a very strong team around you. That's that's one of the things that I feel very fortunate about with Turnkey Lender is that we have a very deep uh, talent pool to play into and to lean into when we need to have resources at the ready. Yes. You know, one final question before our time ends, and thank you so much for this time. But but in your position, what advice would you give any young women uh, that may want to enter the financial sector? or from a leadership perspective, what advice would you have? And the best advice I would say is to reach out to those that you want to be more like. Um, I'm fortunate that, and you can call them mentors or um, inspirations or friends, um, but usually those are mutually beneficial too. So I have several uh, young leaders that I meet with on a regular basis that I get so much inspiration from and, and, and a desire to elevate my game by interacting with them. And social media allows you to find those people really easily and to be able to spend short amount of time with them. Um, it's really the number one thing that you can do. Um, secondly, uh, there's so many podcasts and books out there that just feeding yourself constantly and seeing that as a pastime, not just something related to your work. And this growth mentality is so important to have. And if you if you allow yourself to always be in learning mode, and um, then that's where innovation comes. That's where inspiration comes by learning this new thing and being taught it or uh, pulling something from um, expertise, either from an individual or from a resource, then you're able to in, you know, have it infiltrate your own way of doing your business and slightly change it, allowing for innovation to occur. And, and growth and, and seeing the possibilities of um, what positions you can achieve or what businesses that you can start and lead. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Well, Jill, thank you very much for your time today. Thank it's you. been an honor and a privilege. Um, We would love to have you back whenever you would like to come back. Um, (laughs) Fantastic. Let us know as that patent patent rolls out for your unmanned bank. Um, We'd love to hear some success stories and have a wonderful Monday. Thank you very much. Take care, Jeffrey. Thanks.